Okay, welcome back. So now let's move to module five. Okay, this is related to post processing. Okay, qualitative and quantitative. One thing that I will try to make this model, this lectures, I will take to, to make it this as short as short as possible because this can be very very long. No, there are many ways to do post processing. Also, we have paraview, so I'm not going into well, a lot of details. I'm just going to give you the, the basic information and the most important uh, sampling functions now and monitors that you can use when running your simulations. But again, there are two or three uh, supplements that you have there. Okay, I will mention that later. But here we're going to, to address the most important <coughs> uh, uh, the most important capabilities for <laughs> post-processing in, in, in Parafone, okay? So this module is divided in four, <coughs> four sections. So the first we're going to, to address on the fly post-processing and function objects, which, okay, this is, these are monitors that in open phone <coughs> lingo is called, no, they call it function objects, okay? So let's see how we do this post-processing. So basically these functional objects or monitors, you, you use it just to sample information or to save some fields, okay? So you can sample in a line and a point, a field like, pre for instance, pressure or velocity, or you can compute the right fields, okay? Besides velocity and pressure, what you compute in your, in your <coughs> primitive equation, you can get the, the, the right field. So we're going to see how to do this, okay, and in particular, we're going to focus on function objects. The here you have the location of the function object in the source code. Okay, there are many of them implemented. Probably these are the ones that, that you're going to use most of the time, but there are many, many, many of them implemented. So these function objects, the body, they have a <coughs> they have a common <coughs> a common setup, no? So all with function objects, you have it in contour dictionary. We have seen already this in previous, previous tutorials. So at the end, you have uh, a sub dictionary called functions and you can put it there, okay? So this is the general structure, okay? So you give it a name, then the type of function of object that you want to use, you call the library, and then there are some options, okay? So depending on the function object, you will have, yeah, you, you have some, some options, okay? <clears throat> So I invite you, you t just to take your time and visit here just to see what are the function objects. Also, if you are interested to do sampling, we're going to do some sampling as well. So this is done online while running and sampling is after we have the, the solution. Okay, so I visit, I invite you, encourage you to, to go here and read a little bit. Now the, <coughs> the, in the source code, in the header file, sometimes the, you have the description or you can use the phone info tool. Uh, here also, this is an interesting directory because here you have a database with the entry required for the functionality. So there are some entries like enable, lock, uh, write control. So you go here also, you can get some basic information. So now let's move to the first tutorial. Okay, so we're going to run this one. Do not erase the solution, okay? Because this one also for the next one, we're going to, to use it, okay? So basically this is what we have, okay? This is uh, external aerodynamics and airfoil, okay? And we have here colors, but also we have the integral quantities, okay? So CD, CL, and we compare with experimental. So basically we're going to set up uh, different function objects or monitors, okay? To compute quantities like weight plus, vorticity, mean values, forces, force coefficient, minimum and maximum values, sampling and points, lines, okay? So then we can use that information to plot stuff like this, I lift and drag <clears throat> coefficient, velocity component, or also control residuals, okay? So the case is ready to go, okay, let's run it. But before running this, or actually let's go and I will launch it while we finish the, <clears throat> well, while we finish there, this slide. So I will go here, run all, and it will launch in parallel. It will run 2,000 iterations, so it shouldn't be that time consuming. It's running with four cores. And then we're going to see a little bit what is going on there in that output screen. So see that at the end, see that you add, of the control date, you add this. So dictionary, and you start to put function objects here. You can also use external uh, files using the 
directive include, okay? So basically see that, for instance, we have first the function object for forces. So this is how you define here. You have some comments about the lines. You can use multiple bodies and so on. So later we go in the tutorial and see that. So we have forces, okay? And each function object might have different, okay, different keywords, okay? Depending on what you are doing, okay? Then we have four coefficients. And this one is going to ask, you know, referent axis and referent velocity and area to normalize the quantities, okay? So this is how you define. <coughs> <clears throat> and uh, I want to remind you something also about the the coefficients, so leaf, drag coefficient, and moment coefficient, that they are computed now <clears throat> parallel perpendicular to the <clears throat> incoming velocity, okay? So if you have your velocity, <clears throat> the velocity is entering with an ang angle, you will need to do this rotation, okay? So recall this, okay? So in this case, <clears throat> you're assuming that <clears throat> that leaf and drag are perpendicular to the incoming velocity, but you can have an angle, okay? So you need to do this correction here. Be careful about that. Uh, then we have, for instance, this function object that for me is a trademark. No, all simulations I run, I use it, is to compute minimum and maximum value. So see the difference that each function object, object or monitor have a different type and a different library, okay? So if you misspell something, you will see the... the <clears throat> You're going to see the options available. So see that here, you access this library and see that you have a slightly different <coughs> options than in here, okay? Because you are computing different stuff, but this is to compute minimum and maximum. So kind of here you have the body and then here, see that I put here operation none. So do this, but do not do anything. And then we use macro expansion here to call this body here, put it here and now say compute the minimum and compute the maximum. So in this way, I can split it <coughs> in a function object to compute minimum and maximum for the scalars, but also minimum and maximum for vector fields. <coughs> and to compute the minimum and maximum of vectors, see that is a different operation, it's mean magnitude, and the scalars is just mean, okay? <coughs> so since, <coughs> as I say, I, t I tend to complicate since, okay? But I like to, to this definition, but this is, an expanded function object, okay? You have all the options and open phone also, they have something called pack function object. So you have it here in this directory, you, you have all those function objects already packed that you can use. So see that you put here, your include directive and you call that function object and then you give the entries what you want to sample or enable, disable and give a name. Okay, so these are pack. Okay, there are many of them that comes with open phone. And just to show you that is you go into here, XC, case it. Okay. <clears throat> and it will be post processing. And you should have here all those functionalities. So see that you have many there. Okay, so you can pack those. Okay, you can use those pack functions objects. Okay. Then we add more function objects, okay, to compute y plus, okay. And important that, see that you are giving a name to the function object. So in this directory that you have here is where you are going to save the output. So you are going to find a directory called post-processing and mean, mean max domain scalar folder zero. You're starting to sample from here and so on, okay. So you will open those directories later we see and you're going to find all those text files, okay? For Y plus, <coughs> here is saving a, a field in your solution, but also in post-processing Y plus, okay? You give this name in zero, it's going to save like minimum, maximum, average value, and so on. <coughs> here we have a function object to compute the average, okay? So you can use this one with steady on steady simulations, by the way. So this one also has different entries. So here you have the location, no? you can visit and read the, the description. You will see that they are, it has more, more, more entries, okay? It can be like clean restart, stuff like that. So basically you just say compute the mean and also the, <coughs> the fluctuation, the product of the fluctuations, the average of the fluctuation, okay? So these are the quantities that you can, Compute, by the way, the quantity needs to exist. So UP and NUT, you need to have those fields available, okay? 
And then also you can use this action that you can call an external function object like this. And then you have an external file, which by default is located in the folder system. And in that file you can put some other function objects. Okay. If you want, if you don't want to put everything in the control D, okay. Sometimes I do it. So for instance, here we have another function object or monitor to compute, to sample a quantity UMP in this location. So see that the type is probes, use this library, enable, so this you can change it on the fly. <coughs> you can enable, disable <coughs> the sampling frequency, the frequency how you're going to use it, and then pro at these locations. Here, compute vorticity, access this library. Okay, so as you see, there are many options. I'm not going into detail. Things can be very complex. So here I'm showing you the most important ones, okay? Uh, <clears throat> something also that can happen that sometimes, and it's very important before running, you need to define this one, okay? You, you need to know, okay, I want to use all these monitors. But it can happen that sometimes you run, you forgot to, to put that fu function out. You can also do it a posteriori, okay? So to do it a posteriori, here you have the instructions, it's relatively easy, we're going to see that. So basically, you just create a, an external file, you put your function object there, and then you can run like this. The name of the solver that you are using, and then use this action, minus post process. This is going to read only the function object. There, it's not going to run the simulation. And then you have these options for the time. You can run it in parallel, okay? There is no problem, okay? A uh, particular function object that I didn't show in this case, but we, we saw the, this function object in, in action in the cylinder case, in tutorial in model one, in tutorial the cylinder one, is to compute mass flow. So remember that the method is conservative. What is going in is going out. So you can put like this to compute my mass flow. So you have function object computed in the inlet, and you can put one computed at the outlets, okay? So you can have multiple function objects or or monitors. So as you can see, there are many function subjects implemented in, in, in OpenFlow. We just explain the most important ones, okay? If so you want to know the, the, the function objects that you have available, just use the banana method. Remember, you misspell something and that's all. Or you can just read the documentation, doxygen, or go uh, or go and use the phone info action, okay? In the supplementary slides, there are also another more advanced examples Okay, I'm not going to address that right now, okay, since it can get very complicated, as I say. We have here the most basic functionality, which I think are more, more than enough, okay? Also, you can plot that information using Nuplot or Python, whatever, so this is also in the uh, supplements that you have the, the, that information. So, there are a few exercises there, so you can try to answer this, and, well, if you have questions, uh, we can meet in the Q&A session, and, I can answer that question. So now let, let's go back. Okay, so this is the, the end for this part. Let's let's go back to the tutorial that I let it run in here. So see that it's running. Okay, and what is running is showing a lot of information uh, on the screen. So you saw you have your residuals and see this is the one I mentioned that I always like to like to put it minimum and maximum of scalars and vector quantities now. So we have it here for pressure, no tilde, no related to the turbulence model, and velocity, okay? Then here you have the coefficients, a report of the force coefficients that we're computing, and so on, okay? So this information, this is the log files. The one you can disable this output to the screen, but I like to have this output to the screen, okay? This, this is not, it's not going to slow down your computation. It's added an overhead, but it's not that much. But see that it's running, it's mostly and if you go to, to the case, and let me go <clears throat> 101, should be 101 post-processing, running this one. We're running in parallel. I see that they work in parallel serial with no problem. We're interested in these folders. Let me open C, uh, control D. Okay, so just to show you here. So see that, and these are the external function objects. Okay, so let me put it here. <clears throat> Okay, it's slowing down a little bit. Okay, 
the computer okay now we have it so you have your external function objects you control it and see that you go to the to the end usually we go to the end so the it, it is a standard and here's where you have this keyword now functions and you start to put everything so just to remind you that in open phone 8 this minimum and maximum used to be something like this now in open phone 9 they put this a little bit more complicated i really like it how it was in open phone 8 now in open for nine you need to do something like this okay but it's pretty much the same and this is the extended or let's call it expanded now functionality you also have the option to put it in the packet one the one i mentioned that you you can you you have all these pre-configured scripts let's call it that you just can call it there okay but i prefer to have it here in the expanded way then see that we have forces okay so you choose the patches you can choose multiple patches the patches next to six so they don't ex exist will give you an error then force coefficients pretty much the same okay so you have an explanation and slides here from time to time you have also comments be careful that as you have uh, an angle you need to correct this direction axis function object to y plus related to the turbulent quantities and see that you have many function subject here so here i miss this pill and see that it's telling you all the options available so there are many of them okay so none of them uh, most of the time uh you will use the most common ones are like stuff like current number q criterion vorticity wall shear stresses but there, there is many stuff that probably likely probably you you are not going to use then you have the average here so every quantity that exists you can compute the average okay mean and then the fluctuation and see here that you can call the external function object which is this one okay so you can this is like copy and paste here it's an include directive okay so you have different function objects here and this one we can use it to run a posterior so see that you have this one and you can run all these commands after you have the solution because everything that you have here is being computed while you are running okay it is online computation and all this information can be saved okay in your solution directory so you see for instance let me open one here and see that y plus is computed here so it's a quantity that you can visualize but also there are some quantities that it is information data that you are saving so for instance force coefficient and see that this directory is always safe here in post-processing and it has this name because you call it here like this okay and as you open here it's zero because you start to sample from zero but as you stop the simulation and then restart you're going to have like i know 1500 because you are starting to sample from 1500 okay <clears throat> so inside here you are going to have all the ascii files with we, we all we all the, the the information okay so my computer here is hanging let's see let's see when it, it's frozen okay now so you can go here and see that you have all your coefficients the same will be with pressure pressure is very interesting one because you have the and pressure viscous component and also you have the moments okay so you have all this file here and you have four time okay because you say that you want to compute every single iteration okay then you're going to find like minimum and maximum value so see that if you open this one you have here this correspond ball field value this correspond to the scalar quantity so i just computed for pressure is you have more <coughs> actually we have pressure and new tilde and see that you have the value you have time value location and the cell number so you have all that information available available there and it will be the same for the max minimum vector minimum scalar you will have that then as you open probes on lines and let's see pressure here you have time history see that you have the location pro 013 colon 0134 corresponding on each one to one pro and here you have the value that you are sampling will be the same for a vector okay and then finally we have uh, y plus okay y plus is a quantity that you can visualize but also you have it here and see that you have minimum maximum average value and this value is safe with the frequency you know that the saving frequency but you can change the frequency to report this this information so see that is a lot of information and what you have here is the most common ones okay 
So let me close a little bit some, some of this folder, the, the files. Okay, so the simulation is done and see that it runs smoothly. Okay, you have all your, all your reports there. And then at the end, okay, let's check this grid also. We have this one run solver. So see that it run. You have the simulation, but then we have another step with run sampling. And see that this run sampling, as you go back to your slide, slides, is these steps okay so we're doing this a posteriori post-processing okay so see that i reconstructed my solution and let's say that you have wall shear stress okay that is another function object so see that here i didn't put it okay in my in my online now computing while you are running so let's say that you forgot to compute that you have the option to do it a posteriori there is no problem okay so you have here run sampling and this is how you can compute that wall shear stress okay so you just type this simple form post process when you put this action post process it means that it's going to run a function object and i want to compute this in particular okay so as you go here and see that you put it here it's going to compute that function object and if you want to know the function objects that you can compute like this you can put here minus list if, okay uh, 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 okay it should be Okay, pro minus fun. Okay, let me put post process list minus list. Okay, it's not. Oh, post process. Okay, post process minus list or like this or probably like this. Okay. So see that it's going to give you a list of the function objects that you can compute for the command line. And there are many of them. So see that in these lines, we're computing wall shear stress. This one is doing sampling. So remember that we can do sampling on the, run, on the, on the fly while running. So as you go back here, you will see that here you are sampling these probes online, but also you, you can do it after you have that solution. So this is how you do it. So that is done using the post process. Okay, this is uh, an utility. So remember that always when you see a new utility, new commander, just go always. And here you are going to get <clears throat> some information about this one and some tutorials how to use it. Okay, so every function object that you put here in this dictionary is online while you, while you are running. And then you have the option to do it a posteriori. Okay, so this is one option to compute that. Okay, you can also use the time control, so no serial. I'm running serial here. You can run in parallel with no problem. Okay, this is the one to compute to do sampling. So just to show you about this, we, the, we're going to discuss, discuss this one in the, in, in the next video. Okay. But this one is going to access a new dictionary here that you have it where you have that definition, which will correspond to pretty much to the same that we have in the probes online. Okay. Later in the next video, we discuss this. So this is it. Okay. And what, what we need to do now is the post processing. Okay. So, and here, and let's see the solution. Let me go to the last time. And what we have is this multi-element error file. Okay, so let me zoom in. So by default, OpenFOAM will compute your primitive variables, U, P, and the turbulent quantities. And then all these function objects, see that we compute all these quantities. These are all additional quantities. Okay, so mean, you see mean, and this is the fluctuation. This is the vorticity, okay, which is another function I can see here that is computing vorticity, uh, y plus value, you have all those here. And now you can access there. So you have mean velocity, instantaneous velocity. So in this case, they converge now because we're reaching that steady solution. You have pressure, okay, then the fluctuation. And you can access vorticity, and vorticity is a vector, so you can access the components. So usually we want to look at the one normal to the screen, 
in this case is this one and let me change the scale here and let me put minus 10 to 10 so kind of this is giving you the rotation of the flow okay so it's rotating like this like this and then you have also y plus okay so this is related to a turbulence model so we have an advanced lecture regarding that but this is something that you plot only at the walls okay so see that you, you don't see anything in the domain you just need to select to see that you need to select the wall so i know that the walls are this and then you have it there so see that our y plus is less than one so this is a very fine mesh okay so when you have y plus less than one it means that you are resolving very well the boundary layer the maximum values that say that the y plus cannot be more than let's say for the moment like more than 600 okay but there is a dependency also in the turbulence model but see that this is a very good one okay a very the mesh is a very nice one so we can plot pressure in the surface and also we have access to wall shear stress so this is a quantity also that is not computed it's not saved by the solver but you can save it okay and we save this one using uh as you recall here using this command and the sampling and we have your wall shear stresses again this is a vector okay and you have at the wall your shear stresses so this is what it comes to function object as you see it can be very complex and let me go to the to the source code okay so you go here and at case did here you have some some of those pack function objects you can go here and you will see there and so see fills okay you visit there here you have kind of the prototype so how to use so this is the min mats the one that we were using previously so you just need to come to call not to include this this library so basically this is just no, you are including, you have this pre-pack and that's all. Okay, in the case, I prefer to do it manually. No, I don't like to use this because sometimes you don't see all the options available. So it's better when you, when, you, when you do it manually. And in the source code, you go to SRC, you have here function object and you have all these function objects. Okay, so remember, this is what you compute what, what you are running. So as you go into fields, see that you have all these function objects. So it's up to you to pick up one okay so i have to say that the most important ones you have here but is you are missing something you can program okay it's not straightforward and again we're not going to address that but it can be programmed with no problem so here you have how to compute forces so see that as you open the header here you have a description and general instructions how to use it okay be careful that it's a little slightly different if you are working compressible and incompressible, okay? But there you have an explanation how to use it. Then utility function object, you have this. And let me go to fields bad uh, again here. And I want to visit again this one, field average, just to show you that as you open the header here, you have some instructions. And see that I mentioned that you have some special uh <coughs> options there to use to this one so this is why it's extremely important not to read it to know what options you have but you know to compute this average you can use some windows or if you start to compute it you can do a clean restart and you can see it all your your mean quantity so these are the options that you have there so take your time and visit all all of this you can also use phone info okay so you can go fill uh, but I, well, I think it's not going to tell you much. It's just going to tell you where you have the source code. Let's say, let me check into, oh yeah, you, you select the right one now, the source code. It's just going to show you now the same stuff like we saw when you open now your source code. And the other interesting file is you go here, SRC, and you go into open phone, and here DB, these are the databases. And here you can see the options that you have available for the function objects, okay? You have like time control and stuff like that. So you go here and you can see what you can enable or disable. So namely, just to make it clear, so you, you have all these options like enable, log file, okay? See that here you have enable, log, 
time, start, all those auctions. If you go here, you can get an idea what auctions you, do you have available. Okay, so that's all for this case. Do not erase it because the next video we're going to set the same solution, but now we're going to do the sampling after we have the solution, okay? So we have the solution and here we can do the sampling, okay? So that's all for this video. Thank you for your attention. See you next time.